I really miss the snow. Living in South Carolina, we're lucky if we get anything, but when we do, it's typically only a dusting and it's gone by the next day, if not that afternoon. But I grew up in the foothills of North Carolina, and so it's not like we were shoveling our driveway every morning, but we at least got one good winter storm a year. And when we did, it was glorious. I lived just a couple hundred yards from the best sledding location around. There were three hills, two on the road that ran next to my house. It was like a big check mark. On one side, there was this nice, long, steady decline, and the other was straight down, fast and furious. We'd spend hours riding those hills, and, and it was an absolute blast. But eventually, we'd start getting a little bored and want to up our sledding game. That's when we head over to the other hill. It was off-road, so the old Tommy runner sleds wouldn't work there. The hill was for tubes, saucers, and banana boats, the kind that you couldn't control. No, they controlled you. Basically, from the time you started down, all you could do was hold on for dear life, which, with all of the dips and bumps, wasn't easy. It was like that all the way to the bottom until you reached the small flat area to stop. And you had better stop, too, because if you didn't, the outcome, well, was a little less than desirable. You see, just past that flat area, there was a three to four foot ditch. And if that wasn't enough, there was a freezing cold creek running right through the middle of it. But, sure enough, Every year, there were a few kids who didn't want to stop, and inevitably, they paid the price. How many times have we paid the price for refusing to stop? Someone says something or does something that we don't like, so rather than taking the high road, we respond in kind. Nothing big at first, a snide comment here, an eye roll there, but little by little, things start to escalate. We start down the hill. Voices get louder, teeth clench, faces get red, and the whole time we know that ditch is there. At any time we could end this ride, but no. We can see it coming, but we don't care. Our pride, stubbornness, weakness, and or greediness keeps us moving fast and furiously to our disastrous end. We could have stopped. We no, we should have stopped. Maybe we even wanted to stop, but we kept going anyway. It's not that we can't stop. It's that we won't stop. We have to be right. We have to prove our point. We have to win. And when we do, everybody loses. We lose friendship, respect, jobs, marriages, and maybe even our health. We end up all wet in a ditch. Proverbs 17, 14 warns us against this very thing. It says, The beginning of strife is like letting out water, so stop before the quarrel breaks out. It's like a leak in a dam. It starts out small. It can easily be patched, but if it doesn't get stopped, the crack gets bigger. The water flows harder until eventually it's too late. The same holds true with our relationships. How much pain, how much heartache, how much violence, how much destruction could be avoided if at some point, if at any point, somebody, anybody, would just stop? Look, friend, you don't have to keep going. You don't have to be right. You don't have to come out on top. Just stop. It's okay. It may not be easy. It may not feel good but at the time. But hey, it'll keep you out of the ditch. I'm Pastor Stephen Mims, and that's your word for Wednesday. May God bless you.